So this is uh, the last of the robots that I've got today. This is uh, my buddy Zeno. So when I was a postdoc um, at the university uh, for a, a couple of years back, um, I spent a lot of my time working with this guy. Um, we were developing a, a synthetic tutoring assistant. So Zeno would be plugged into a whole variety of other uh, systems, such as the Xbox Connect, uh, the like a microphone and uh, voice recognition, speak automatic speech recognition, developed by the uh, computer science team downstairs. And we would have Zeno interacting with kids as a um, instructor for health and fitness. So we would track children's movements, like their physical activity, and then um, have, have them have a quiz about their healthy living as well, which was great fun. Uh, we ran that as a uh, event over at the Western Park Museum for about uh, a couple of, couple of weeks. And we got a good couple of thousand people involved. And we collected loads of data from kids, um, how they play and understand Xeno. So one of the main things that I enjoy working with Xeno is that unlike the other two, we have it as a, a humanoid robot. It's like a person. And Xeno in particular is um, uh, facially expressive. So it's got about, f I think, five or seven motors in the face that can articulate and it can create a variety of expressions. Some are very easy to recognize straight off, and some look a bit caricatured, maybe. We've used it. So one of the main um, parts that I found interesting working with the robot is um, children's responses to it. So a lot of the work we had was uh, regarding children's understanding of whether Zeno is a, uh, a mechanical being or something more like a person. And we found that the younger children that interact with the robot, particularly around the age of, sort of six or so, tend to treat Zeno very much as like a fellow child. They treat it as a boy robot. We've um, quite well established that children consider Zeno to be uh, a male, whether they consider it a male person or a male robot. It's another matter. But we see younger children tend to play with Zeno and tend to ask Zeno questions that they might have other, uh, other kids. So they ask questions such as, you know, what's your favorite color? When's your birthday? Um, do you have a sister? Do you go to school? And so on. We found when we brought this robot into schools for, uh, with um, working with older kids as well, so children around like eight and up, they tend to ask different questions of Zeno. They tend to ask questions about its capabilities, uh, or its understanding, its, its logic, um, also its programming. Some children want to know whether it's programmed in Java or Scratch or any of the other programming languages they might know. Um, we've, we ask, uh, have children ask about its like its knowledge of the world, does it understand what people are like, and so on. And that's quite, it's quite fun to see because we see a difference in children's understanding of people, themselves, and biology that seems to happen round between. For, uh, that's very different if you ask children uh, age six what the world's like, and you ask children age eight what the world's like. They seem to have this um, change in knowledge happening and this ability to grasp a lot of the, um, the, the biology in the world um, and understanding about themselves. So it's quite cool to see that that transition happens with the robot as well. One of my favourite parts is in that mid sort of way, when they are learning about this, they seem to ask questions that sort of make sense you'd ask a person, but really only ever actually make sense if you were asking questions from a machine. So we get questions like, how do you have a bath? That's not something you'd necessarily ask another person. But the idea is that Xeno might need a clean. It's something like a person. It needs a wash. It needs to look after itself, as we all do. But it's also, you can't have electronics in the bath. You're not allowed to bring like computers or laptops in the bath. So how, how does Xeno manage both? We have other questions about um, children asking um, whether he has a sister, but whether that sister's been built as well. So it, it, it sits in this midway. Do you go to the doctors to get your wires checked? So, if children are understanding that, yeah, the robot might malfunction, it might have difficulties, but where, where would a person go? Persons don't go to mechanics, they go to doctors. And that's been some of my favourite uh, favorite research, um, working with the robot. One of the, um, the key parts of working with Xeno is people's expectancies are very different from that with the animal robots. They do expect there's a human intelligence in there. They do expect a lot of it. Xeno is built by Robokind. Um, a company, uh, I believe, in Texas. Um, they have um, shifted their design quite a bit so that it was a research robot. They're now using um, Xeno as, uh, I think it's now called a Milo robot, looking for its use in helping support children with autism and ASD. So it, they have um, 
set the robot up with lots of simple repetitive actions, some very clear unambiguous expressions and statements. And it's the, the idea behind it is it helps children um, with um, perhaps difficulties in managing social interactions develop a structure, develop an understanding of um, how human-human interactions might work well, modelled on how the human-robot interactions are going.